regard to biometrics, and this may seem slightly uh, out of place, and, uh, oh well, I suppose we'll have lots of facts for you, but uh, a fair amount of opinions. Anyways, DNA, um, in terms of authentication and biometrics, uh, DNA is, uh, well, people almost give it magical qualities, and, and don't get me wrong, I mean, DNA is magical stuff, but not in the way that we tend to think of it. Um, the original, uh, well, you know, nowadays things have developed, and, and DNA uh, analysis has has progressed. We've got uh, not just the Human Genome Project, which was actually based on one person, but um, we've now ex extended it to the Pan Genome Project. Uh, we have uh, DNA from uh, people from different uh, nationalities, ethnicities, um, and uh, a broader range of understanding of what DNA is and, and what it does. And, you know, all of this stuff is, is wonderful. But um, we seem to think that, you know, we, we extend that back to uh, the original DNA analysis that we did, which was extremely crude in, in comparative terms. When we started using DNA for uh, identification, and, and this, this goes back to, say, the mid-80s, um, we were not, uh, you know, we were definitely not identifying somebody by the DNA that formed them. Um, when the, the original DNA identification uh, uh, process and, and, and what you, you did in, in regard to identifying somebody with, with DNA um, was not on the basis of the DNA that makes you you. Uh, the DNA that makes you so tall, the DNA that gives you certain hair color, the DNA that gives you certain eye color, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. Um, that uh, is, is only a small part of it because, you know, 99% of it's the same for everybody. So it's, you know, it's hard to make identification on that basis. The identification tends more to fall on what tends to be referred to as junk DNA. And it's not on the basis of patterns in there. Well, it's, it's one particular pattern. It's, you've got four uh, amino bases in there. Um, and sometimes you'll have two of them together. Sometimes you'll have three of them in a row, the, the, same, the same amino acid. Uh, sometimes you will have four, five, six, and what we're doing in terms of the identification, and this is still what we're doing in terms of identification, is simply looking at the statistical uh, amount, the, the comparison of how often, you know, how many strings do we get that are the same in, in the relative uh, proportions of chains of two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Um, that's what we use it for. And because it's on this basis, it's not an actual identification of the person. It's a statistical identification. And, um, I mean, it's pretty good. It can identify someone with, you know, statistically uh, valid uh, certainty, confidence of, you know, one in six million people. Well, um... And there was the famous uh, 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 Simpson uh, trial, trials actually, and uh, they, you know, they identified on the basis of uh, DNA analysis. And then it turns out that they were careless with regard to that and it was contaminated anyways and, and 
that evidence got thrown out of court. But even if it had held up, if, even if they'd done it properly, you have to remember that that's, you know, identifies with a confidence of one in six million. There's 50 million people in California. That means that there would have been eight people in the state of California that would have matched that DNA sample. So, uh, you you do have to be careful. You, you, we have to know these things about biometrics. You know, yes, it's identification on the basis of what you are, but our our storage, our analysis, um, has limits to it, and we we need to pay attention to that. We need to understand that uh, it's it's not just. You know, we, we, we think it's magic, and, and certainly uh, we are getting more information out of DNA these days. We're, you know, the, the uh, technology in terms of what we can use DNA for is improving, but the identification hasn't changed. And, and part of the reason for that is, is sort of the, the legacy issue of you have to prove the technology. And the technology, in terms of the original DNA identification analysis, has been proven to a certain standard. There's lots of uh, uh, precedent for accepting uh, DNA analysis and, and um, the accuracy, the, uh, the reliability of uh, DNA analysis, and uh, you know that that is accepted by the courts, but only if you're using the same technology. If we change the technology, and you know DNA analysis is changing all the time in in terms of what we can do with it, but in order to get those. Uh, that type of information from the new technologies accepted in court, we have to go through the same process all over again of proving that this is reliable, that it is and, and can be relied upon to decide court cases. Uh, so, you know, we, we have to accept that as uh, forensics. And we'll talk about more, more about this uh, when we talk about... Um, uh, evidence in law investigation and ethics. But, you know, do remember it now in terms of uh, identification, authentication, in terms of biometrics. Uh, we have, you know, it, it's not just, yes, DNA says who you are, but, you know, what are, how are we using the DNA? How much can we rely on it? How quickly can we get results, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of these things have to be part of our decision in regard to any type of biometrics. And we, you know, we, we cannot say, you know, oh, uh, this, is, this is great, this is absolute identification. Um, we have to be realistic about what we can, what we can actually use, what we can actually prove, uh, whether the technology is is usable for us.